Hi, I'm Josh. You join me here in my studio in Melbourne, Australia. And today we're going to be doing some post-production in Lightroom and I'm going to be doing a video that I promised a little while ago, actually before the video I did on soft proofing that I'll probably put a super up to um, down below. So this is going to be a video on uh, post-producing um, one of my raw photographs from um, Finland that I shot of a young wolf in September last year. And uh, I like to do my post-production um, here in my studio. I, I use an Intuos 5 um, uh, to do the post-production. I find it better than a, a mouse or Wacom tablet. Um, so I'm going to be using that uh, for this, um, for this uh, video, which is what I normally use. I'm going to go step by step through all the different steps that I do in Lightroom. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, the, um, why, I, why I do things the way I do them and the order I do them in, and a little bit also about what's going on under the hood in, um, in some of the controls in Lightroom. And you'll see, generally I don't do much to my photographs when, um, when I'm doing post-production. For me, if it's not a great photograph in camera, um, and it needs a lot of post-production, it's probably not a great photograph to begin with, so uh, I tend not to, uh, to do too much. So I'm very much an in-camera guy. I like to get it right in camera. I shoot many thousands of images when I'm out in the field in the hopes that I do get one right in camera. It's not obviously just about exposure. I'm looking for the right gesture at the right moment with the wildlife, uh, the right background, the right light, all of that needs to come together. So without further ado, um, and without dragging this out too long, let's get into some post-production and we'll switch over to the computer and um, get started. Okay, so um, here we are in uh, Adobe Lightroom. As you can see, many, many images of uh, wolves here. And we're going to have a look at um, uh, this image in particular. And uh, I'm going to go through how I got from the raw image on the left here to the finished uh, image on the right hand side here. Now, as you can probably see, and as I mentioned, there's not a lot of difference between these, and that's generally because I don't tend to do a whole heap to my photographs. If it needs a lot of post-production, as I said, it just wasn't a great photograph to begin with. So um, I, I, I tend to go fairly quickly through my post-production. I'm gonna go slow here, just because I wanna walk you through the steps, but uh, generally the post-production for a photograph like this will probably take me less than a minute, maybe two minutes tops, uh, to get from beginning to end. So um, let's just have a quick look here. So here we have the raw image on the left and the finished processed image on the right. Now this was shot with a Canon EOS uh, 1DX Mark II with a 600mm f4 lens, the Mark III version, the new light one. And I shot it from a hide, um, which I pre-positioned and was a ground level hide so I could be down as low as I possibly could. I like to do that so that I have a more uh, intimate um, contact with the animal, more eye contact, that I'm at the same level. There's not a feeling of being a voyeur, which I really don't like. So shot from ground level, and this is actually on in no man's land between uh, Finland and Russia. And it was shot on my um, Finland wildlife workshop uh, in September of 2019, uh, in late autumn. A beautiful young wolf came uh, several times quite close to the uh, to the hide. This is full frame, 600 millimeters, so uh, no cropping required. So let's just go back over. This is the latest version of Lightroom we're looking at here at the moment. And I'm just going to take the raw file over to the develop module and walk you through the steps that, uh, that I like to do. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, with this photograph is I'm not going to crop it. I'm actually really, really happy with the crop in camera. Uh, there's no reason to, uh, to do anything to this um, in terms of crop. I like the way the animal is looking into the frame. And that's something I, I always try and do with my wildlife images to avoid sort of unnecessary negative space. You want to have a good, strong, um, uh, you know, um, use of the space in the frame. So uh, by having the animal looking into the frame, it's all positive space, very little negative space. So the, the cropping, I think, is very, very good already. And let's just have a look at uh, starting off with white balance. And what I generally like to do with my white balance is... Um, I can set it quite easily by eye, but it's a good idea to use the white balance tool and find somewhere neutral in the image as a starting point, primarily because it will help you set the tint correctly. So the tint or the cyan magenta slider is the hardest one to set by eye, and many, many people go wrong here, and which is why you see images with strong cyan and magenta casts across social media and other places. So a good way to avoid that is just find a very neutral part of the image and you know somewhere where the RGB numbers um, in the pick target uh, are very close to, the, to uh, even. Uh, they don't have to be, of course, identical, but very close. So 
here they're quite close and that's probably a good starting point uh, and as you can see that's uh, that's warmed up the image quite a bit and uh, just adjusted the tint ever so slightly it's taken out that little bit of cyan that was there uh, and we're looking really quite nice now i'm just going to cool it off just a fraction just seasoning to taste because i'm interested in pleasing uh, white balance rather than necessarily what it might be accurate white balance uh, we're not shooting an advert here for a company so we don't need to have the exact color correct what i'm looking for is pleasing white balance so that's my white balance set um, then we'll move on to exposure now as you can see here this image was exposed in camera pretty much perfectly there's really no reason to adjust the exposure slider whatsoever um, the image is exposed to the right there's no clipping that's occurring neither the highlights or the shadows so I don't need to adjust exposure at all in this instance. I also don't need to play with contrast. The, the overall contrast that I'm looking at here is quite close to what a, the look I'm going for. Uh, what I will do though is just tweak my whites and blacks uh, and then have a look at the final contrast. So I'm going to do that by starting with the blacks. And I like to hold down the option key on my Mac or it'll be Alt on a PC. And that way as I drag down the slider you can just see as clipping starts to occur so I'm going to obviously bring that up until I've got just a tiny bit of solid black around the corner of the eye there. Just a little bit of clipping so that I've got some solid black in the image itself. Uh, I think it's, it's good to have a little bit of black uh, if you've got black in the image. And then the same for the white. I will just set my white point the same way. I'll find the clipping point and then I'm just going to back off until I've got just no clipping on the whites. Um, she's going to be just about around plus 15 plus 16 and then I will drag down the highlight slider just to control the hot highlights in this case I'm going to drag it all the way down to minus 100 and I still feel that the highlights around the back of the leg here are just a little hot so I'm just going to drag down my whites a little bit more just to about there uh, just so I've now I've got a really nice transition going into those bright highlights and that's about perfect for what I'm looking for. Now I'm happy with the overall contrast in this image. It doesn't really need any more contrast. If it did, I could add a little bit more here with the contrast slider, but generally that's it. That's it. I'm done pretty much with my tone controls in the tone tab in Lightroom and I'll move on to the presence tab. Um, now in this instance, uh, I don't want to use any clarity. I find clarity generally quite a sledgehammer. Uh, it's not a very subtle adjustment, especially when it's overdone. Um, what clarity really is is local contrast enhancement but in this instance I don't necessarily want to have any local contrast enhancement except perhaps in the fur of the wolf and I can think I can probably achieve that a little bit more accurately and obtain just a little bit more sharpness although the image is very sharp already by using the texture slider uh, with a local adjustment <coughs> excuse me so what I'll do is uh, I'll use K which is the shortcut key for the uh, local adjustment brush and I'm just going to paint. Uh, if you push O while you're painting, you can actually see the area that you're painting. So you don't paint areas you don't want. Of course, you can always erase it afterwards as well. Um, and then once I've painted it, I'll just reset the exposure indicator. I'll just drop in um, about 10 or 12 points of texture uh, into the woof of the fur. Uh, the the wolf of the fur, the fur of the wolf rather and uh, and that will just really help to crisp this up quite a bit uh, in the fur and give me that local contrast that I want in, a, in a, I think a more pleasing way than using clarity uh, once I've done that um, that will be effectively it uh, I'm not going to use anything in the presence tab no more texture no more clarity no dehaze the image doesn't need any any uh, global saturation added to it um, and I don't think it actually needs any vibrance either so uh, we'll leave the presence tab completely alone and come down to the HSL tab. Actually, just before I do that, just mentioning the tone curve. If you set the controls properly for your image in the tone panel up above, the first panel we did after white balance, you generally shouldn't need to make a curve adjustment uh, unless you're, you're, you know, you're trying to achieve a certain look or effect in your photograph. So generally, I don't need to use the tone curve for my photographs. I can, I can achieve it all in the, in the tone uh, using the tone sliders. Uh, but it's there of course if we need it so coming down to the hsl panel uh, i like to work in hsl so i can control the hue saturation and luminance of each individual color um, and just having a look at what i want to do to this image at this point in time from a color perspective 
there isn't really much. I, I think I can add a little bit of warmth back into the golden grasses in the foreground. And there's a number of ways I could do that. I could do that. Um, probably the best way to do that is actually going to be with um, uh, a gradient filter coming from the bottom up. So we'll use a gradient filter and just draw a gradient filter on. I just have the exposure set to plus one there so I could see what it was doing. And then what I will do is I'll look at just adding in a little bit of saturation, see what effect that has on the grass. No, I don't like that. It's uh, it's too much. So I will do it with uh, we'll do it with temperature instead, and just add a little. That's better. Just add a little bit of warmth back into that grass. I want to keep it subtle. The key with all of these adjustments is to keep them very very subtle. Um, the more subtle they are, the more you can build up the effect, the more believable it's going to be. When you sledgehammer something and you hit it really, really hard uh, with, a, with a big number on one of the sliders, it tends to look very unrealistic and that can create an image that doesn't look um, very pleasing to the eye. So uh, with, with these sort of adjustments, a little bit goes a long way. And quite honestly, um, you know, this is probably an area, again, a lot of people make mistakes in, is they just think, well, the slider goes to 100, I'll take it halfway. Um, or something like that, but it's really not necessary. Once we've done that, we can close that up. And that's that's it for color adjustments in this photograph. That's all I'm going to do. Next, I'm going to come down to the sharpening um, panel, the detail panel, and just talk a little bit about how I like to sharpen my photographs. So the first thing I guess we should say is that any sharpening that you're doing on screen needs to be done at 100%. So you must zoom in one-to-one -one so that you're looking at the actual pixels of the, of the image. Uh, it's no good trying to do the sharpening if you're zoomed in at 2 to 1 or, or only at 25% or 33%. You need to be at 1 to 1. I like to then go through the sharpening sliders, um, starting with the radius slider. Now, the radius slider determines how many pixels either side of an edge get lightened or darkened, which is the way sharpening works in digital captures. By lightening the light side and darkening the dark side, that increases the perceived sharpness of an image or accutance. So I like to start with the radius. Now in an image like this that has a lot of high frequency detail, that is very fine detail in the fur of the wolf and in these grasses, we're going to want a low radius. Now if I was shooting an image of a portrait of say my daughter or something like that, I might want a higher radius if I want to keep the skin really soft and smooth. So in this case, uh, the default of one is actually quite a good starting point, but I can actually drop that back to something like 0.7 uh, of a, uh, and you can actually see that if you hold down the optional alt key uh, while you're on the slider, you can actually see the adjustment as you increase or decrease the radius, uh, the effect that's actually having on the image. Now, the, the key thing to remember is that you really want to use a low radius for high frequency detail. So much of this image is not high frequency. So that is the soft, beautiful background. But the, the parts that I want really sharp is has got a lot of high frequency image. So high frequency detail. So we're going to want a, a lower radius there, so 0.7. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom into one to one and I will hold down the option key while I increase the sharpening amount. Now that will show me the image in black and white and that is because the sharpening is applied to the luminance layer only. Uh, it has no effect on the color in the image. So it's just easier to judge the sharpening if you hold down the option and alt key and you can see the image in black and white. And that's about all that's required. So setting about somewhere between 55 and 60 in that bracket is very, very nice. And that's going to be quite crisp and sharp now. And then we'll back it off to, a, to fill the screen and I'll apply some masking. So at the moment, the, the, the sharpening we've done is applied globally. So that is, it's affecting every part of the image equally. And I don't want that because I don't want to soften this really nice background that I've got going on. Now sharpen this, up this really nice background or put additional noise in there. So what we're going to do is just put some masking in, in here and about 15 points of masking, just enough to take out some of the sky, so some of the soft background. And then that's all that's really needed there. And that's the sharpening panel. It's actually very, very simple. So that's all I need to do to this photograph. There's no noise reduction required in this instance. It was shot at ISO 800. Uh, on the Canon 1DX Mark II, so basically there is no noise there uh, in, in, the, in the raw file. On the new 1DX Mark III, that's the scene right up to ISO 1600 and even higher than that actually. It's really quite incredible. 
so no noise reduction is required. Um, if there was some noise reduction required, it would probably be just a very gentle amount of luminance noise reduction, uh, which shows up as grain generally in the image. It's very rare these days in um, more these modern cameras to see much in the way of color noise, unless you're at ISO half a million or something like that. And that will show up usually as purple or magenta, sorry, magenta or cyan blotching in the image. Um, but it's very rare to see that. You've got to go to some older digital cameras to really find bad color noise these days. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the remove chromatic aberration button in the lens corrections tab. Now, there virtually is no chromatic aberration in this image. Shot with the, the 600mm f4 lens, the Mark III, it's basically a perfect lens. Uh, but it's a free lunch to tick this. There's really nothing lost uh, by ticking this button, so I tend to do it for all my photographs, just in case there is some CA there that I missed somewhere. Um, I don't tend to do much in the way of vignetting to my images. Uh, so I'm certainly not going to uh, vignette this image. I'm going to leave it as it is. I think it's very natural. Uh, the last thing I'm just going to do is spot it. Uh, the shortcut key for that is the Q key. And by doing that, you can actually see there's a couple of spots up here in the sky, but I notice that they're not actually dust spots. They're actually insects. Um, just gives you an idea of how amazing the, the resolution is on these modern cameras. These are actually insects buzzing around. I'm going to leave them there. I actually think they add to the atmosphere of the photograph. Uh, they don't detract from me, so I'm not going to take them out. I think I'll actually just leave them there. Uh, I have noticed that... Um, no, that's fine. I just think that's fine. They're not detracting at all, so I'll leave them there. So that's basically it. That's all I've done to this photograph of the wolf. Um, now I would just render out a TIFF file. I could potentially take it to um, over to Photoshop or to Nick uh, and look at perhaps one or two small tweaks that I might look at making to this photograph if I wanted to sort of take it up to the next level. Um, we can have a look at that. I might do that in another video. Probably in this instance, all I would look at doing is just a little bit of tonal contrast in the highlights of the fur of the wolf, just in that back leg. So I make sure I've got the texture there I want, and that would be it. Um, and that would only really, even then, I would probably only bother with that if I was actually going to make a print of this. And I'll do another video perhaps on, on, um, on making more prints as well. We'll see, it. we'll see how that goes. So that's it. Post-production of the, of the, of the wolf in, um, from Finland. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to do more of these, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I can do that. Cheers for now.